Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist D.T. from weatherist.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's a Sunday evening. It's time to talk about weather. Yay! Lots to talk about. Well, that was some blizzard, wasn't it, last week? Back on the 22nd, 23rd? That was a doozy. Now, the thing is, is as we move on to our next topics here, and we talk about additional winter weather events that might be coming up, try and keep in mind that not every single event is going to be like that. So, you know, 10 days ago, places in New York City, folks in New York City would have loved to get in 4 to 8 inches of snow or 8 to 12. So if they get that again in the future, and it's not 26 inches, you know, that was a historic event we all went through. Just try and keep a little sense of perspective here. All right, our topics uh, this week will be, of course, the Midwest snowstorm and the severe weather threat for the Delta and the Deep South coming up. The east of North Carolina, southeast Virginia snow, possible February 5th. How about for those guys? February 7th and 8th, and maybe February 9th or 10th, something like that. Two different possibilities. And then a possible severe Arctic outbreak in late February, uh, mid to late February going into March with the uh, look at the uh, prolonged pattern here for most of February. So let's get right to it. This is the system coming out of the Rockies and the southwestern states as of uh uh, Tuesday morning. This is the 12Z European model. And again, uh, I will point out here just for our folks here, this is from Euroweather, just in case you want to sign up for a pretty good service for only nine bucks a month. I mean, nine bucks a year, I think it is. Anyway, uh, there's the low and the purple line here. This represents pretty much the rain snow line in a general sense. I mean, it's not exact, but it's there. And you can see all this is snow here. And look at the warm air coming up this way, just feeding this stuff here. So very impressive, a cold shot coming up here. Uh, winter storm, I should say, for the central plains of the Midwest. Now, this is the actual pattern here as of Sunday afternoon, <coughs> excuse me, as of uh, January 31st. And we can see some important features and it's how much has it changed since last uh, Saturday, the 22nd and the 23rd. And one of the things I want to point out here, look at this enormous vortex here. See all this thing here? Now, that is a, uh, clearly that is a, uh, uh, I guess we would call it a, a positive NAO right here. So that's what that's one major difference right there. We still have the block here. So there's our negative Arctic oscillation right there. Okay, but look at the Pacific jet howling in this way. So we have a little bit of ridge here, but this the uh, El Nino Pacific jet is undercutting it. And then we have our ridge right here as well. So all the warm air is up, you know, being brought up this way. So this is the overall pattern as of January 31st. And of course, the, here comes our storm out of the Midwest. This is as of uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, it's raining in Chicago uh, pretty significantly. Look, strong, so severe thunderstorms are erupting here uh, on this uh, strong cold front across the Delta into the uh, Tennessee Valley. Big snow up in this whole area right in here Tuesday night. And again, a seasonal cold air, but the high, we have a little bit of cold air damming on the East Coast, but nothing significant. This high is going out to sea uh, rapidly, and that low is going to track up through Montreal. And sure enough, there it is. This is uh, Wednesday morning. A lot of severe weather during the Tuesday night into Wednesday morning over Alabama and Tennessee, eastern Kentucky, Georgia. I, this does not look like a good uh, deal here. I really hate these nighttime severe weather threats. And... Um, in terms of snowfall, here's the European model, and you can see it's got a band of 12 to 18 inches here from western Iowa down to northwestern Kansas, right through southeast Nebraska, and a good 4 to 12 inch bands across some of the rest of the uh, central plains into the Midwest, southeast Minnesota, Wisconsin, that sort of stuff. Notice again, Chicago is all rain here, so is Kansas City. As far as, far as severe weather threat goes, well, this is the uh, folks from the uh, Day 3 Severe Predictions Storm Center. SBC has an enhanced uh, probability here, uh, which is pretty significant for early February, I would think. And then if you look at the actual uh, 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 probabilities for seeing severe weather threat, and you can see the cities in here, you know, Jackson, uh, Shreveport, Little Rock, Memphis, uh, that whole area all in pretty good shape. Uh, not quite St. Louis, but definitely Evansville and, Lu and Louisville and that sort of stuff, Nashville. And uh, again, 30% probabilities, which is not bad for early February. Um, we're going to see a lot of that, I think, this El Nino, as El Nino continues to die into the going in from the winter into the spring. All right, let's talk about February 5 here, east of North Carolina, southeast Virginia. A lot of folks saying, hey, where's my snow? Well, okay, maybe you'll get something. We'll see. Um, what happens here is the cold front comes to a halt on the February on February 4th. The front is already through New England, but as you can see, it's all over southeastern Virginia, most, uh, and it goes right into the 
part of the Carolinas down to Georgia here. And a lot of cold air is coming southward behind the front. So that's not really, that's pretty typical. The fronts hang up. You know, the problem is we also have this warm area of high pressure right here, which is, you know, sending up the southwest wind. So the front comes to a screeching halt. So, uh, but what happens is that gives a chance for the uh, low pressure to develop. And uh, we can see the trough. This is Thursday morning as the cold front's coming through. So uh, this is the trough. So the cold front, remember, if we go back uh, an image or two here, let's go back here one second. Oh, well, it's not going. Anyway, the cold front um, is right about through here on February 4th, on the morning of the 4th. And this is the upper trough. So there's a piece of energy down in here. And as the front hangs up, it's going to trigger low pressure to form on the front once it gets off the coast. Well, that's that's the idea behind it anyway. So let's uh, go back up this way. And there you can see. And of course, this is the morning of February 5th here, Friday. Now you see the low pressure area southeast of Hatteras. Now the red line here represents the rain snow line. So this is saying it's snowing in Norfolk and Elizabeth City. Uh, you know, I'm not know if it's accumulating given how warm it's going to be the next couple of days, but it's definitely going to be snowing here according to this. As far northwest as Richmond, maybe in, in Raleigh, not much there, but southeast of Richmond into Williamsburg and along the Virginia Eastern Shore, uh, the lower Delmarva, uh, looks like it's snowing pretty good here and that's at 7 a.m. and uh, what happens is you can clearly see look how this trough amplifies okay this is Thursday morning now watch this boom look at this thing amplify go crazy and you can see the tilt on it you can see it's uh, all negatively tilted and the low begins to develop right here and it develops a nice storm which affects these far eastern areas now here's the next system right in here we have to watch that in a little bit for February 7th or 8th and here's our ridge so this is supplying the cold air in like this and there's one system here and there's the other one system here so that's why that this system here develops here on february 5th because the trough is very dynamic and develops a, almost a slight negative tilt and it causes the snow to fall in terms of the snowfall amounts not looking at a lot a couple of inches here and you can clearly see if you look at our scale you know do right up in this whole area here a couple of inches of snow uh a thursday a thursday night uh, well, so we'll see if it actually happens. I think it's a good possibility. Uh, there's not going to be a big snowstorm, but definitely anywhere from one to maybe, maybe four inches, maybe, you know, maybe five in a few isolated places, mostly a one to four inch type of snow, one to three, something like that. All right, East Coast, February 7th. Let's talk about that potentiality. Now, this here shows the uh, overall pattern as of February 9th. Now, uh, it's a, a little past February 7th here, but I want to show you to give an idea of what the pattern we're looking like here. Now, we have three different models I'll look, looking at. The, the one here on the, uh, over here, uh, this is the uh, uh, European model. You can see right there. And this here is the GFS, and this here is the Canadian. And what's interesting is that all of them have to happen the same overall pattern. Uh, they all have, as we can see, a very strong ridge right here that goes up to the Arctic Circle. Okay, So when you have the, that's the PNA, and when it goes up to Alaska... That's a positive PNA. Then you have a negative EPO. All right. So you see this extension. This extension here is the EPO, but it goes up that far. Okay. So that's why it's a really enhanced ridge. So all three of them have that. They all have a pretty deep trough over the central eastern United States. Now the Canadian has a trough off the west coast, so the trough is back here. The GFS has a trough on the west coast, so the trough is right over the eastern Midwest, the Appalachian Mountains. And the European has it just off the coast as well, so the trough is hanging back here. But they all have that. So and the other thing that's important to notice is that all these models have a positive NAO. You can see it very clearly. There's no negative NAO in any of these models whatsoever. So that's what this pattern is we're looking at here. So this is a decent pattern. It's not fabulous because you don't have the negative NAO, but it is capable of producing moderate-sized snowstorms for areas of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast if this pattern were, in fact, to verify. So... Uh, but, but that's what we're looking at. And we can see this on looking at the teleconnections. Uh, look at the NAO here. I call it my marker. Stays positive the whole way through. Nice ridge here. It begins to come down a little bit. I don't know about that. But uh, And then the EPO is very weak or close to neutral. So, uh, again, the NAO stays positive the whole time through. And this is what we saw two, three winters ago. We had all those moderate-sized snowstorms, no really big ones. We had like 15 or 20 on the East Coast in that very, very cold winter. None of them were super big but they were frequent. So that's what you can get in this sort of pattern here. Okay. And if you look at the Arctic Oscillation, it's strongly positive, and then it begins to drop towards neutral and slightly negative by the time you get to the second week of February. Now let's take a look at the European model here for February 7th. Let's talk about detail here. Now here is the system in the southwest over Texas. You see the red X here? I pointed it out right here. You can see it. Okay. There's another system here, and this is the one from February 5th, which is now uh, leaving and going out to sea. 
So this system should be the one that's, that should develop. But what happens here is the, the, the Sunday afternoon European screws this up and it does something which is not correct. Let me clear the markers out here. And what this is out, this is these early morning Sunday AM European. So this is from, uh, this is from Sunday morning. You can see right in here. Um, this is, okay, Sunday AM, one of the European, okay? Of the European model, right there, and there's also a nice big storm here. It has heavy snow from Richmond all the way to Cape Hatteras, across into the Delmarva, central and southern New Jersey, up towards New York City a little bit, and then it looks like it's headed towards New England. And sure enough, it bombs the hell out of central and eastern New England in New York City, and so on and so forth in New Jersey. So that's what that big system potentially is. But again, look how tight this is. Even if this develops, folks, look how tight this is right along here. That's it. All this is miss. All this is a miss. It's right along the coastal plain. If that develops, it might not. Okay. Now the EPS from uh, early from uh, tw uh, Sunday morning, okay, has this uh, a fairly nice developed system here uh, over the Tennessee Valley and the southeastern states, and this would produce some sort of low, um, right? And let me get my mark up here. It would produce a low right along here, something like that. Okay, so it's a decent looking system on the European ensemble, the high experimental run on the PRL. But this is the 12 is the operational run. So this is the new one Sunday afternoon. So again, this is Sunday PM. Okay, this is the afternoon run. Look at the system here. It gets crushed. Why? Because the European model is dropping all the energy coming down this way into the Rockies. So this system becomes so powerful that the system that was down in Texas gets crushed and forced this way. So this is here's the northern system. It goes by by the southern system. goes this way. There's no storm on the east coast on February 7th or 8th, according to the Sunday afternoon European model. But again, the ensembles don't show that. This is the ensembles, and this is for Sunday morning, and you can see it has the low close to the East Coast Sunday morning. So that's for February, uh, uh, this is Sunday night, I should say. Uh, again, uh, it has the system there. So we'll see if that actually develops yet. I don't think the regular European model, the one that ran Sunday afternoon, is correct. I think the ensembles are correct. Uh, there is a threat for February 7th or 8th. It looks right along the coastal plain. Uh, we'll see how big it is. Now, for February 9th or 10th, uh, let's get started here. This is the European Ensemble, 240 hours. And look at this massive ridge up and down the west coast of North America that goes all the way to the Arctic Circle. And, of course, what does this do? This pulls down extremely cold air this way. Now, the trough is centered along the Midwest, along the Mississippi River. There might be something developing here in the deep south. We also have a bit of a negative NAO returning here, so that's interesting. There's our polar vortex, and there's a super huge ridge all the way to the North Pole, pulling down the cold air. So this is a very interesting pattern by the time we get to February 10th, if this is correct. If we look at the uh, European uh, parallel run for the extended, we can see the same sort of thing. Very strong cold north winds, uh, uh, Arctic air coming straight out of our North Pole. And here again, there's some sort of low in this general area trying to develop February 10th. Uh, some of the models have this further to the west. So it looks like it might want to go up the Appalachian Mountains. I don't think that's correct, but that's going to be determined by that negative NAO. If we get some blocking over Greenland, it'll be East Coast snowstorm. If. We don't know. Just if. And this is uh, the uh, February 12th. We can see a very active, very stormy looking pattern here. The vortex is now being forced southward. The vortex, which started out here, is now dropping down to here. So that's a very strong sign for cold air. Here is the flow coming this way. There is a negative NAO. There is a negative Arctic oscillation. Very promising looking pattern. There's more energy in the southern jet stream coming in this way. So the threat for February still looks pretty high. It still looks like a pretty, pretty active pattern here from what I can see. I don't see any reason to think that's going to break down. And if we look at mid to late February, <clears throat> this is mid February 15th. This is a good looking map. Uh, you know, not ideal. There's something in the southern stream here. We have strong Arctic flow coming southward. Uh, so this is a pretty good looking map uh, for mid-February. It doesn't show anything outstanding right now, but it shows a map that's filled with possibilities. Okay. Now, if we look at week one, the European weeklies, we can see this. Again, this is from the folks at WSI. You can see uh, this is for next week, the first week of February, the first to the uh, February 8th. We can see there's our ridge moving off the east coast where it was nice and warm we can see that here there's our midwest storm coming this way and there's a big blocking pattern up here developing over the arctic region if we go to the next map this is february uh 8 to february 15th there's a big trough over the eastern united states a big ridge here so again the jet stream it's going to do this 
and then it's going to come down this way and then it's going to come down here then it's going to go back up this way just like the maps are showing so very active uh, promising looking pattern here again then if you notice this last map not there's not a lot of big negative NAO here the Arctic oscillations are strongly negative but not the NAO a week three uh, same sort of thing uh, still a cold looking map and then week four uh, very cold this is extreme if this is correct with a huge ridge on the west coast and pl plunging down the arctic air over the eastern half of the country this would be february 22nd and february 29th that's a long way out but that's what the european weeklies are showing anyway folks that's this week in weather i'm your host meteorologist dt from weatherist.com i'll talk to you soon